Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, uh, advice to uh, Bali Shuva, Jews returning to Judaism, converts to Judaism, and uh, as always, uh, B'nai Noach, Noahides. And I, those of you who have been following these videos, know that I am often struck by what appears to me to be uh, unusual um, uses of language or uh, verses that somehow stray uh, from what, uh, what we expect. And uh, one of these passages is in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, 16. And it says, take heed, this is talking about uh, idolatry. Take heed to yourselves that your heart does not open itself to enticement and you turn aside and you will serve other gods. Um, Rashi, commenting on this verse, uh, says that once you turn away from the Torah, the natural uh, sequence of events, the natural result, is immediately Elohim Acharim other gods, false gods of other Zara, idolatry. This seems to be not the usual way that the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, works. As we've discussed in previous videos, there's usually a methodology, and it's gradual, it takes time. Um, the uh, Yetzirah uh, tempts you, usually with little things. And then you, you do a slight indiscretion, and it gets a hold of you a little more, and gradually over time you go back and forth. But um, eventually there's a slow and steady decline. And idolatry, the worst offense, idolatry, is at the end of this gradual decline. That's not the case uh, in this, uh, this posik, in, in this verse. This verse seems to imply that once you turn away, once you turn aside from uh, the Torah, once you turn aside from the Word of God, boom, of the Zara, idolatry. It seems to be almost immediate, and that's not the way we understand how the Yitzhahara normally works. So, what's going on here? Uh, why is the sin of leaving the Torah so different? Why does leaving the Torah lead directly to uh, idol worship. Um, as is often the case, the Chofetz Chaim uh, comes to our aid, and he does so by means of an analogy. Uh, during a battle, during a campaign, one side may, may be victorious, wins the battle, does very well. But that victory may not be complete because the enemy could regroup, could reform, and after a bit of a rest, after a bit of a regrouping, can, can mount a, a counterattack and could, have, uh, could, could win the next battle, ultimately the war. Um, this is a problem, and how do you get around it? How does the victor avoid this? The sign of victory is when the, uh, the vanquishing army, when the winning side, um, disarms the enemy, disarms the opponent, prevents him from the ability of mounting a counterattack, rebelling again, starting another battle, maybe living to, uh, to fight another day. Disarmament. Leave them uh, not only defenseless, but also without a means of attack. And in this comparison, this is how um, the loss, the, the turning away from the Torah differs uh, from other, um, the usual path of the Yetzirah, the usual path, path of um, the evil inclination. Because with of the other sins, um, Okay, you, you start slipping, you start sliding, you catch yourself, maybe you can do some mitzvahs, maybe you'll do tshuva, you'll turn back, and it's a back and forth. You can always regroup, you can always mount another attack and be a good person. There's always room for tshuva. 
with the other sins. And, and it's in this respect that turning away from the Torah, turning your back on the Torah, stands alone. Because like the analogy with the battle, with the other sins, and you still have the Torah, you can not only defend yourself, but have the strength and the wherewithal to mount a counterattack. But when you turn your back on the Torah, when you turn away from the Torah, you've been disarmed. You're helpless, you can't defend yourself, you can't attack. You are completely, completely um, defeated. This is the, it's in this battle with the Yetzirah. Um, when the Yetzirah gets you to turn away from the Torah, it has indeed um, won. Um, There are those who, Balei Trova, for example, who drift away from observance. They don't necessarily abandon Torah, but they, they're lax in their observance, or they were never observant, and then eventually come back. That's not what this turning away is referring to. This is the turning away from someone who has completely turned his back on the Torah and has completely rejected it for good. That person is truly disarmed. That person um, goes directly to Chaz um, to Avodah Zara. And um, if a person repents, if a person still has that vestige of Torah in his heart and in his soul, and he repents, God will forgive. To be left with no means of coming back, to be unable, literally unable, to repent because you don't have anything left, you, you're, you're completely defenseless, you are in very, very sorry shape. Um, leaving the Torah is literally dangerous to your spiritual well-being. It's a terrible thing. And when we see someone who is Hasvasholom, God forbid, going off Derek, heading off the path, we have to do what we can to nudge him or her in the right direction. Their souls are literally at stake. Um, I cannot overstate the importance of this. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. I hope they're uh, uh, of some inspiration to you, of some use to you. And until next time, on behalf of the Immuno Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.